I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for another BDSM United podcast. Before you get to a contract, it's important to understand how to make rules and how to give orders. The entire concept of a DS, Dom Sub, dynamic is a relationship built around a rule set. Some of these rules are inherent to the dynamic, while the others are enforced as a reaction to it. It's crucial to understand the goal of these rules to avoid making mistakes along the way. To push a sub's limits, you have to have enough information to know exactly where their limits lie and how you can push on them in a positive, beneficial manner. The information, or sorry, the more information you have, the more able you will be to accomplish this and the greatest source of information from your sub will always be interactions, honestly to the core. When choosing rules to enforce, you need to plan ahead. Creating a rule that you can't actually enforce or a rule that's impossible to follow undermines your dominance. For example, what about a rule where your sub is required to strip to her panties as soon as she enters your home? This is uh, something common that some inexperienced doms or new doms will often come up with, but what happens when she comes over with her mom or when you have some vanilla friends over? If your sub has to try and decide if you would want her to break your own rule or not, the rule itself is a failure. Rules and orders shouldn't leave any room for interpretation or guesswork. For this reason, we suggest that you're very careful about creating any persistent rules. Before you do, you really want to think carefully through three things. What are all the possible scenarios in which this potential rule may be obsolete or impossible to follow? Second, would this rule be more effective if it, was, if it was implemented on a per scene basis? And third, could this rule force dishonest interactions? We're not mentioning any relationship rules, just as the ones related to uh, the BDSM side of a relationship. The details of how you run your relationship will often be tied into the BDSM identity that you take on but they shouldn't be confused as being the same thing. When it comes to rules for a scene, the only limit is your imagination. Since a scene is something you have uh, nearly complete control over, you don't have to be nearly as vigilant with the rules that you put into play. As long as the rules don't undermine your authority, as long as they make logical sense, and as long as they're created with a purpose, you're good to go. Common BDSM scene rules are something like uh, an enforced eyeline. Your bottom must look straight ahead and only straight ahead at all times. Think of this as a discipline or a mental blindfold. Instead of their vision being passively or uh, passive, uh, sorry, passively entirely restricted. It's only partially restricted, but requires great effort and control. It requires that your your S type or your bottom to focus. If you push them hard enough, their eye line will almost certainly break, and that would force a scene type of punishment or correction. Speech restrictions. Your S-type or your bottom is not allowed to speak unless spoken to. Uh, this one's very common, and it's used in the majority of BDSM scenes. Just be sure that they're clear that this rule never usurps their need to speak a safe word or to vo voice a legitimate concern. It might seem obvious, but you never want to put your bottom into a position where they have to choose between their own safety and feeling that they would be a disappointment to you. A variation of a speech restriction also used sometimes are banned words. Uh, while these are sometimes simply words that you may dislike to hear, uh, 
this can also be a tool to correct a bottom's poor grammar and so uh, specific common mistakes uh, will often be banned uh, and speaking them will incur correction. For rules like this, the correction should be known in advance. For example, anytime you say anyways, you will get 11 strikes with the paddle. Uh, procedure. Your S-type or bottom must remember and obey a set of commands. These are things such as slave positions or hand gestures. Some tops take procedural play to the extreme, and sometimes with great success. If you're more of a task-minded person, or perhaps you were in the military, this might be an angle for you to explore in further detail. A vocal cues, your bottom must respond vocally to specific actions. The most common example of this is having your S-type or your bottom count strokes in impact play. It's also common to have them thank you for specific actions. For example, anytime I let you touch me, I expect you to thank me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, master. Thank you, daddy. Thank you, uh, you know, thank you, sir, would work. Uh, if you're just a top and you're not in a relationship dynamic and you don't have honorifics already in place. Uh, any other rules you want to enforce are really up to you. Just be sure the rule will add to the scene instead of hampering it. If you do feel a rule is causing friction in a scene, uh, be quick to abolish it. It's never wrong to make changes to things that are not working as you have intended. As a dom or as a top, every choice that you make should be made for a reason. If you're just doing things without thought, simply because it seems hot or it's something you saw in a video or a, a porn scene, you're setting yourself up for mistakes, for fail failure, or inconsistency. Every action, as the common phrase says, every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Your job as a top is to focus on the reactions first. Every choice you make should be made in an effort to emotionally manipulate your bottom into a desired direction. When giving an order, you should follow these simple guidelines. Every order should have an intended result. Every order should be perfectly clear without any need for interpretation. Every order should be framed to fit the scene and should be consistent with the dynamic that you have, if any. Every order should be spoken clearly with authority. If you want to be a great top, your orders should never be two-dimensional. For example, I want you to strip for me. That on its own seems like a perfectly simply fine order. It's simple, and the intended result is having your bottom rendered nude. Every top reading this is probably given this order many times without thinking twice. But if you want to be the best top in a scene that you can be, you may need to go a little deeper than this. Having them naked is a physical reaction. Uh, you know, uh, Sex and BDSM and kink is almost entirely mental. So when you give an order or make any choice, it should be with an intended emotional reaction in mind. Remember, your job is emotional manipulation in a positive way. Uh, they can get naked on their own anytime. But the more you push, the deeper your bottom sinks into a scene, the less lucid their thoughts will be. It's possible to put them in a state where lucid thoughts are nearly impossible. Any order you give should leave absolutely zero room for interpretation. The order strip seems basic, but it's actually missing a lot of pertinent information. Instead, Dead, this order should be framed differently. 
in this way. For instance, I want you to stand up. Stand facing me in front of the fireplace and remove your shirt. After having them remove all of their clothing, the physical result is identical, but instead of them feeling no different, only now being naked, your series of most basic orders have removed any semblance of free will from the order and has forced them into a position capable of making only a single choice or a single series of choices, which is to obey or disobey. In these little details, it, well, sorry, it's these little details which separate a person dabbling in kink and a top transcending typical sexuality. Anyone can try to tell someone to do something they think is hot. To be a great top, you should be giving orders with a purpose, and you should frame them in a way uh, you will enjoy as well. While everything we do as doms or as tops is focused toward the ultimate pleasure of our S-types or bottoms, you should always find a way to package what you do in a way you will enjoy to your core. It comes back to the wants versus needs. If you give your bottom what they need, you want to do it in a way you want it. I'm Primal Piggy. Thank you for joining me for this BDSM United podcast where we're talking about putting rules into place within scenes. Not so much with relationships, although the, uh, the principles definitely apply to relationships too. But we wanted to frame it in, within scenes so that people that are not in relationship dynamics can also benefit from uh, instituting rules and giving orders and this advice. But like I said, if you're in a relationship dynamic, you can definitely pull from these principles about uh, how to give orders and how to frame and how to give rules and be consistent because consistency is definitely important in a relationship dynamic. You want to be consistently dominant or consistently submissive according to your identity within your relationship dynamic. I'm Primal Piggy. You can find all of our resources at www.bdsmunited.com. It's a joy bringing this to you today, and I look forward to talking to you again soon.